This DJ, he gets down. And, and mixing records while they go round. We had all sorts of cool different shows at Power 1490. We had a rap show on, on every night called Wrap It Up. On um, the weekends, we mixed a lot. I also remember Wrap It Up, we played all the hip hop. I remember the Power 7 and 7, the biggest seven jams of that day. I'm going to screw the names up of it. I know we did a rap show. Uh, um, uh, wrap it up, I think is what it was on Saturday nights, and uh, that's where we went even deeper. You know, that was where we would play things that, uh, quite honestly, you shouldn't play on the radio. I think is uh, probably the best way to put it. But we got away with it in that, in that context. The champion Southern playlist of Cadillac music. We're at JB. Oh, 1490s hip hop showdown. We, we sat down and we, you know, with a couple of friends of mine, good friends, and we came up with this idea. They called a, a Saturday Night Wrap It Up show. And uh, said, hey, cool. So I got on the phone and I, I called 1490 and asked to talk to Dick Stein. You know, this gentleman, yeah, yeah. Dick said, yeah, he, he agreed to meet with me. And I went in and offered this proposal to him and said, hey, you know what? Why don't you give me six weeks and let's see what happens? You know, I had never been in a radio st uh, studio ever. I think I set off the, uh, <laughs> the emergency thing <laughs> a couple of times, you know, that first week. <laughs> and I get a call on the hotline, hey, what's going on, <laughs> you know? Jamming with the maximum T on. Power 1490. Oh, yeah, you're in tune to another edition of the St. Ives Saturday Night Rap Show right here on the Power Station. I knew that between 10 and 11, people were probably gonna be in their cars, you know, driving somewhere. So that was my that was my time to get everybody. I said, you know what, when they get pumped up in the car, you know, the, right before they go in the club, they're gonna be pumped up. That was my goal, was to pump everybody up before they go into the club. What we're gonna do, we're gonna give you the top 12 rap jams right here on Wrap It Up Saturday Night, right? But before we do that, we're gonna kick off about a half an hour of a whole bunch of new jams, right? It was very, you know, Similar to something back in New York, when you listen like to Mr. Magic or Red Alert or something like that. Yo, this is Prime Minister Pete Nice. This is DJ Richie Rich. And MC Search. Yo, it's third base with our boy Maximum T. Stay tuned, because Saturday night is all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> Yo, what's up? This is Tim Dog, straight out of the South Bronx. And when I'm not dissing them suckers from Compton or dissing some whack and fees, I'm talking with my man Maximum T on the Saturday night rap show. Peace, and I'm out of here at 5,000. This is B Real from Cypress Hill, chilling with Maximum T on the Saturday Night Rap Show. Everything is very fat and funky. People were recording the music. People were, were listening. People were, you know, hyped about it. I, I remember, you know, when I leave the station, I would drive around. At that time, you'd probably have people in Speedway driving up and down South 6. They were playing the radio station. You know, they were playing the radio station. And I think one reason was because you, you know how long it took. At that time, you had cassettes. You know how long it took to make a mix cassette, you know what I mean? So you turn on the radio, you know? The music that was played had a direct correlation locally to the record stores. So if you were getting, if you had a hot um, program like, like uh, Maximum T show playing your music, it was a direct correlation between what was happening at those retail outlets. We had great sales coming out of Tucson, you know, based upon Maximum T's show. What I did do at St. Nights was huge at the time. You know, they were kind of getting in the marketplace. I drove up to San Francisco and asked St. Nights for a sponsorship of the show. I drove up there, met with the guy, hey, you know, I got this rap show. And I told him the concept, I drove up there, they signed a contract with me for a sponsorship. So it was called the St. Nights Saturday Night Wrap It Up Show. And the cool thing about it was I had, I had all the St. Nights commercials that we would play, you know what I mean? You know, uh, uh, from the uh, the ghetto boys, you know, I sit alone in my four-corner room eating a chicken wing dinner, you know. I sit alone in my four-corner room eating a wing dinner. <laughs> Chill out, man, we doing the St. Ives commercial. What? Yeah, St. Ives. Take it out. I got mine, watch me rush it. St. Ives brew, the crooked eye gets me busted. Four double O-Z and I'm straight. Cause that's all Bushwick can tolerate. Saying I is always one up on you. If you're drinking something else, your mind's playing mind's tricks playing on you. DJ Maximum T used to DJ all the frat parties, like all the Q parties, all the fraternity parties for the African American student base. Boogity would, would be there. I don't know how he knew I was there, but he would show up. And it got to the point where it was like, hey man, you can take my crates. And he, he'd be right there wait, waiting at the car to bring in record crates, you know, helping me with stuff. 
He's like, man, when you gonna let me get on a mic? I said, you know, next time, next time. So, got to a point where he'll show, he would show up at a club or something I was doing, and I'd, I'd give him the mic, and he started going, you know, and I was like, okay. So, that's how I got started. I mean, really, Maximum T letting me hang out with him, pass him records, say a couple of words on the mic, started me, and then I had to come up with an on-air name, and I had to figure out something quick. So, I came up with MC, Boogie D, Make the Crowd, Boogie Down, and that's how I started. Uh, a, a lot of people think of Power 1490 as Tucson's first hip-hop station. Yeah, that was cool, man. It was an all-hip-hop station on AM, but we actually played a lot of dance music. We had um, some specialty shows on the weekend. Club 1490 was a show. We did a late-night show called Insomnia. We did a show called The Latin Bass Bomb, and we, it was really the only place in Tucson to get house music. Power 1490. Dance your ass off. Oh yeah, once again it's on Power 1490 Jams. Today is hottest music. Gary the Sandman stepping in. It is time for Saturday Night Hot Mix. Power 1490 Saturday Night Hot Mix. Kid Loco here and woo! Power 1490's EG's Traffic Jam. Bruce St. James as we go non-stop in your 5 o'clock hour. Power 1490 Jams. Friday Night Flavor Zone. Insomnia, the best high energy dance music mix. Back to back. Power 1490's Club 1490 Jams. Today's dance music non-stop. Power 1490 Jams with a Latin bass bomb. It's number 16 with DJ Blade. He is here every Saturday night at 12 to 2. I'm playing the best tribal freestyle and bass music. Music that uh, a lot of people in Tucson had never been exposed to. The station was indeed very dance oriented. It was more upbeat. Uh, Bruce aimed for a mix of dance and, and uh, R&B, but never was really completely dance music and never was completely hip hop. It was always a, a real fluid mix of the two. We added a lot of mix shows to the to the mix because I really liked I liked mix shows. I liked mixers. I thought they brought something that again made us sound different and was a real point of differentiation between us and KRQ um, at the time. I didn't know it at the time, but I was actually doing the first live mix show in Tucson where the DJ actually spun live on the air. Buss it. I mean, obviously, the Slow Jam show kind of evolved out of there where uh, it was a chance, again, to do something and to counter-program what was going on around us and a chance to really play some songs that you normally wouldn't get to play on the radio that were great songs that I thought deserved a chance to be heard. And at the same time, uh, something we could wrap our arms around, something that would make the radio station sound special. Go me and you were hooked tight with my lip in the dark You're in your negligee and I'm just casually sharp The only udder of light comes from the moon into the window We're alone, slow music playing and then so I ask you to dance Sidebar story, quick story. I remember one night we were late getting out of the dance show to get into the slow jam show. And you know, we're not thinking anything wrong with it. Bruce calls in one of his legendary early day rants and just ripped me a new one. So bad that I really almost quit that day because he was like, at 10 o'clock it's slow jams, at 10 o'clock it's slow jams. And like, you know, I don't care what it is, at 10 o'clock slow jams. So, you know, slow jams. Yes. Yes. Slow jams. Slow jams was a show where we just slowed it down and we talked soft and we played boys to men and we got quiet and we set the mood. Power 1490, slow jams. Power 1490, KJYK Tucson. Turn down the lights, get a blanket, grab somebody really, really close. Power 1490 jams today's hottest music. It's Brett the Man with your soft and warm, quiet storm. It's Power 1490 slow jams. Got a request, 880-1490. Power 1490 jams. Power 1490 slow jam with Z-Man and a tasty treat from Belle Biv DeVoe. And I remember the day uh, that I pitched a show to Bruce St. James called Sunday Night Slow Jams. We were doing the slow jam show, I think five nights a week at like midnight. And midnight, people were staying up to midnight to hear this show that I think was an hour long. And it was, it was probably our most popular show on at midnight. And I remember uh, putting the little plan and telling Bruce, man, this show is so popular at midnight. Why don't we do a, why don't we do a show called Sunday Night Slow Jams on Sunday night? Maybe two or maybe three hours. Um, you know, can we give it a shot? And I still have the original note that he left in my box. Before there was email, and he wrote on the note. He said, hey, congratulations. The Sunday Night Slow Jam is yours, R-Dub. Don't mess it up. And uh, it all started at Power 1490 AM in Tucson. And, 
today the show is heard over uh, on over 50 radio stations across America, and I'm, I'm so fortunate that that one lucky break at Power 1490 led to um, you know a huge nationally syndicated show. So I'm really thankful for that. Power 1490 jams today's hottest music. Randy Williams with you on a Sunday evening, and I'm getting excited. Okay, tonight is the first night ever in Power 1490 history. It is the Sunday night slow jam. Brett the Man actually did a, a character of an old Jewish lady. Uh, named Marion Rosenthal, uh, which is one of the most popular characters on, on Power 1490. It's funny, this character is a combination of all of the characters that I knew in my life growing up. I'm originally from Philadelphia. We gave her a, uh, an urban street lean. So she was sort of a, a hip Jewish grandmother with a, with a, uh, with a low rider, and uh, she was, you know, she could s s talk the the street lingo and the, and the street slang so she can relate to her peeps. More man is Javits, Ms. Rosenthal. <sighs> Here we go. Me and my butcher like peanut butter and jelly. We chop a lot of meat, that's how we do it at the Kosher Deli. So place an order, but don't be mad, cause we charge high prices at the Kosher Deli. Got a butcher named Berkowitz. He opens up the store at seven, closes down at six. Puts in the fritz of it, don't have time to spoil. Yo. That's why the meats that you see come in foil. Yo. So that was sort of the, the crux of the morning show. I mean, with that character got me my job. So, I mean, I'm very thankful to the character of Marion Rosenthal, and, and I still do that at home every once in a while, and, you know, tease my kids with it. And they're like, Daddy, stop doing that. I remember a couple specialty shows on, uh, on Power 1490. I remember Street Soldiers. That was when you brought rival gang members together, you know, from the city streets of Tucson, and talked it out, talked about the issues. I'm Bruce St. James, and I'll be hosting a talk show called Street Soldiers. We'll have city leaders, members of the Tucson Gang Task Force, ex-gang members, and we'll be taking your phone calls, talking about how gang violence has affected our community and your lives. My vision of it was, uh, uh, if we stopped the music on a music station, it would get a lot of attention right off the bat that we could grab people and we could hit them with a message. We could talk about uh, uh, specific things that were important to our audience. And we could talk to them on their level and uh, we could talk about solutions. I know that we did shows on teen pregnancy, we did shows on gang violence, we did uh, shows on uh, uh, conflict resolution, you know, the types of things that a junior high or high school kid would go through during their day that uh, might be a problem. How do we work that into a show and how do we uh, try to talk to them one-to-one -one and hopefully solve it at the end of the day. Look at who messed up the concert at the lighter shade of brown. Right. So there's two Mexicans fighting and everything, but yeah, fighting, where does it get you, man? It stopped the whole concert. The cops, as soon as we get busted on six or whatever, and we tell them we're from California, boom, they stereotype me and throw the whole They claim it's their turf, it's their body, whatever. Why don't they all get together, man, instead of like a gang and clean up their neighborhood, you know? I'm, I'm proud of, you know, that we didn't just have like, you know, the police gang unit on to talk about them. Uh, we had gang members on uh, to talk about gangs and, and talk about how to get out of gangs and talk about uh, maybe the senseless violence that was going on at that time in, in South Tucson and in some of the barrios. Once again, it's Bruce St. James. I'll be your host, your moderator, trying to run the show from the middle here. And with me, Officer Chris Questus from Tucson Police Department. You brought a guest today. Yep, sure did. Are you going to introduce your guest? Yeah, look, I have a, uh, an old homeboy that uh, I've known for years. Uh, his name is Martin Encinas, and he came to us from uh, Islos. How about not even seeing the face of the person you're killing? Just think about where that bullet's going to go if it doesn't hit your target. Mm -hmm. You know, how about all those innocent kids that are dying? I mean, a two-year-old kid the other day. And when we do things, we like to do with hands better than guns and shit, but no one else wants to fight. Because they're, they're punks, man. They don't want to fight. They want to go head up and shit. We're always down to go head up. We'll put the guns down and go head up. Hey, but nobody else ever wants to do that. I used to be a gangbang, I used to slang dope and everything a few years ago. Uh, I just want to let all you Vato Chicanos know out there uh, that there's another life besides that. They get the in-your-face answer that they want and that they need to have, and in many cases what their, their parents are not giving them. Uh, and, and it helps them to kind of clarify things. I, I think it does a tremendous good because, because there's somebody out here saying, look, man, I've been there, you know, then they can say, well, this guy made it, man. You know, maybe there is hope for me to get out. Man, I, I can remember listening to a, 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 an episode of Street Soldiers hosted by Bruce and um, and two rival gang members in Tucson. I can't remember the names off the top of my head, but just they were they butted heads and they went at it quite a bit on the south side. 
And I just remember listening to this episode at home with, you know, no music playing in the background. Bruce kept no music bed underneath it. And just two rival gang members talking it out, you know, and calling a truce that night. And I remember that night just crying myself to sleep thinking, man, we can, you know, we can get, you know, we can get together as a city. And I hope they hear this in Los Angeles. I hope they hear this in Detroit and Chicago and New York, because this is what it should be like. I didn't see anybody else in the city of Tucson, a city that I grew up in and cared about and went, and went to school in. I didn't see anybody else talking about those things. If I watched the news at night, these things weren't happening. Uh, if I read the, the, the one newspaper in town, this, this wasn't uh, an issue. But if you spent any time around our audience and answered the phones or went to any of our events, you knew there were real things going on in this city that were being ignored. And so uh, these days, I think there's a lot of community organizations and a lot of people who uh, take this seriously and deal with it. I'd like to think we were kind of on the forefront of that.